Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you kind of see in this video. Um, my name's Richard, I'm the cardiopulmonary manager here for Cherokee Nation Hastings Hospital. I'll kind of give you a quick overview of the Draeger uh, XL ventilators that we have. So to do that, let's go and kind of look at the back of the ventilator here real quick. Uh, back here in the ventilator, we have your air and oxygen hoses. Of course, you know the air is yellow and the oxygen is green. Um, so we're going to take those around. And that way we can go ahead and plug these into the wall and uh, accordingly, green to green, yellow to yellow. And we'll also have the electrical cord here. We'll pull it out. And plug into the, if you have a red receptacle, that would be better, but here for the presentation purposes, we'll just go ahead and plug it into uh, the regular uh, circuit. Um, here in the very back of the ventilator itself is actually the on and off switch. So in here for our Purpose, just go ahead and we'll go ahead and turn it on. It'll kind of alarm at you or at you a little bit. Uh, so we'll turn it around here real quick on this part. It kind of does a little self quick test on this and kind of run through all the uh, screen uh, shots and uh, also the lights for the other uh, buttons as well. And once it gets done, right here we're going to actually push it in standby. So all you got to do when they hit, hit standby, then hit this button here. And now I'm back to put it in standby. It will alarm off at you at this point, but all I gotta do is hit alarm silence here on top, then hit the button again, and that takes away the alarm, it takes away the, the red banner as well. So here at this point in time, you can actually start setting up your settings if you need to be. So you can hit um, ventilator uh, settings here. It'll bring up your all your little uh, control knobs at this point in time. It has some prefigured configurations, so it depends on what the provider talks about on the ventilator uh, title volume on the respiratory rate, FL2, and so forth. So to say, say for instance, the doctor or provider wants you to set it up on a 500 title volume, all you gotta do is highlight or touch the title volume uh, part and just adjust to whatever the provider wants you to have, then hit the button again and confirms that. The same way for the respiratory rate, we can say they're on a rate of 16. We can change it up to 16 or whatever the provider orders. And we confirm that too as well. So here's your auction percentage. Uh, your I time what right now is at 1.7. Um, we'll leave it there for right now. But um, your slope always stays at 0.2 where we kind of like to be at. And here's your peep and also your pressure support. Um, normally, a lot of times we, we leave it on peeps of uh, five, depends, but for our purpose, we're going to go ahead and turn it off. We're turning it down to zero and go from there. So to initiate the, the ventilator, or to initiate for the patient, once you do have the patient hooked up to the ET tube, uh, then what I'll do is go back into uh, the standby button, hit start, then hit the button again, and it automatically you know, starts ventilating the patient at this point in time. So as you can tell, all down here is the very, on the very bottom is all the settings that you have. And if you had to come back in here to change any kind of settings at this point in time, all you could do is kind of touch around that area and it brings up that paper or, or it brings up that page there again. Uh, right now we've got the CO2 monitor off, so we'll just leave it off right now. Um, the other modalities, which right now are SIMV, you have your control and mechanical ventilation your pressure control ventilation plus and your, and your C port plus pressure support and APRV and so forth. But for this presentation, normally most of our patients stay on SIMV, so we'll just leave it on SIMV for this uh, demonstration. Over here as well, let me get back over here, you have your alarm limit button. Your alarm limits, once you highlight that, it'll take you to your alarm limit settings. As you can tell, the middle part is what the ventilator or the patient's actually really doing. So for here, you know, uh, we like to have it above about 10 above the uh, pressure or the, uh, or the minute ventilation. So we'll turn that, highlight it, turn your knob again, of course. So we'll put it up here about 17. And there we go. And we'll confirm it. And we'd like to have about five below that too as well. So we'll change this here to about 2.5. And here you have your airway peak pressures, which you know the patient is right now is doing about 22. We have it at 50, so we'd like to keep it about 10 above that. So we'll change it about about 30, about 35, be fine. And your high tidal volume. Uh, here is your 
uh, spontaneous breathing. Um, now the ventilator itself is set on 16, but this is for the patient being spontaneously breathing. As you can tell, they're not spontaneously breathing, they're at zero, but if they're at say 16 and you want to be alarmed, uh, if they start breathing above 25, then you set that at 25. Your apnea ventilation out right now is a set of 15, but I like to have it about 20. Um, so we'll change it to that part. So there's how you set the alarm parts on that. The, in, the overview of the screen here itself is basically is your uh, uh, plateaus and your waveforms. Over here is your FL2, which is about 98%, which is we have a set at 100. But here's your peak pressure, the, how much volume is actually, or pressure it takes to get to that part. This is the mean airway pressure, so it's great. Tidal volume, we have it going to set at 500, so we're doing great on that. Here's your 16 rate. And here's your minute ventilation at 7.3. Um, to get the data, if you want to see all data all at one point in time, all you gotta do is hit this button here that says data, and it gives you all the parameters that the patient's actually doing at this point. I love this screen that we don't have to kind of find things on the screen here and there, uh, so it kind of gives you all the information at this point in time that you need. Um, also, um, we'll go ahead and close that out. Here's again, here's your uh, alarm silence. If it is alarming off, well, you know, you can hit that, it silence off about two minutes. Ventilator settings here kind of brings up what that part there is. Now here here's your sensor parameters. Your sensor parameters basically is your oxygen sensor, your CO2 sensor. And right now we do have the CO2 sensor turned off because we do not have it hooked up to the patient. But uh, all you can do on that is hit on and it will come on. Um, if you do not confirm anything with this button at all, it will not uh, acknowledge it, so therefore it will stay off. So um, uh, here is your system setup is where we were at earlier. And to put it on standby if you need to take a transport to the patient to x-ray or whatever, hit the standby button, then go to the standby. The numbers up here shows us it shows your modality. It's in SIMB. Um, we always have a set an auto flow. That way, the, pay, the patient needs more flow. It automatically compensate for the patient. Here, it tells us that we're in adult mode and we're at an ET tube of 8.0. Now, to change this, if you need to uh, change that, hit your ventilator settings. Then you go to a, the additional settings down at the bottom. Your ATC, which is automatic to compliance, is what it change, changes this part. It's all automatically defaulted at 80, uh, but you can change it up and down uh, necessary to meet the patient or if they have a leak. So we'll leave it at 80, but if they have a big leak, you can always change it. Uh, but also here, you can also change it from ET tube to trach, especially if they do trach, always change that to a trach, that way and also it'll change up here too as well. Uh, that's about it. So we'll turn it back on ET tube with this for this demonstration. Okay, now for over here, what we have when we set up on the patient itself, we have the um, uh, inline suction, the HME, uh, and also the uh, what they call CO2 cabet. That way, the uh, entitled CO2 can be monitored. We have the um, ET tube holder itself as well. Um, and here's the MDI adapter. So on all of this, the, uh, in, the uh, inline suction is actually a 72 hour suction or change out if you needed. So in here, what we'll do in this part, uh, we'll open it up here if I can here real quick. And you'll pick a day, whatever, 72 hours from the days. Like the day is safe, the day the inference is Monday. We'll change it out on um, Thursday. So we'll take a tab off this. And we'll wrap it around the, uh, the, the suction part here. Let's know what day we need to change that. This part here will go actually towards the ventilator. We remove that, and this actually goes into the ET tube. Now, the HME is what we use here at this, at this facility. HME basically stands for heated moisture exchange. Now, I go uh, actually, we'll do the MDI here real quick. Where's my MDI adapter? We'll take that out. 
Let that guy off with a few bats. Got your cue bat, then you have your MDI adapter, then we're going to a little piece go. This will actually hook up to the ET tube. Wait, Jimmy, thank you. And this will go to the patient just like that. So, and we'll put the lung back on there. Like I said, the MDI adapter is used for, that way we can have, uh, give them meter dose inhalers. Because once it's in here, we really don't want to break the circuit. We want to keep, keep the circuit, closed circuit as much as possible. Same way for the HME. We really don't change out the HME uh, 24 to 48 hours or, if, or uh, more if needed, depending on the patient's uh, humidity. Uh, and suction wise, we can use to hook it up to the suction here. Like I said, here's the entitled uh, CO2 Cavet. And that's actually located here in the back as well. And that goes in just like so. And that will actually be measured by the uh, author of the screen for the, entitled, the patient's entitled CO2. Uh, down here in the bottom, if you can see, this is what's called the uh, HEPA filter. HEPA filter is, is the uh, bacteria filter that we use trying to uh, uh, keep everything inside for uh, bacterial purposes. And this is actually the inspiratory limb and so forth. Um, so I don't believe I missed anything. Um, so uh, again, this is the Draeger uh, XL. This is just a quick overview about settings and so forth, how to set it up quickly. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the respiratory therapy department. One of my uh, expert uh, respiratory therapists will actually answer any kind of question that you need. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.